So you normally think of the Lavo being in a valley or in woodland, but not tonight. This Lavo is going up there. Lavo up the mountain and that's the Lavo up. Right let's have a look at Andy's setup. he's got his chair, he's got his Doctor Who's sonic pencil, <laughs> he's eating chocolate before his tea mate. Looks very happy in there. This, this works a treat. Good. Just, I've just put mine up. Just takes that little bit of strain off your, your back. Cool. Right, this is my setup to, for the night. Got the lights on. The dog's got a bed. It's my cooking area. All my sleep stuff over there, ready to deploy later. But already the uh, a little bit of frost here is frozen really quickly inside. We'll measure the temperature. Inside here in the Lavo, it's a pleasant two degrees, if you can see that. But outside here now at dusk, uh, with the wind chill, it's minus six. Got the sun going down over Scotland here, and we are just inside Scotland. The summit of Windy Gyle. On your bed. There you go, on your bed. Good girl. Right. Gonna be get the big jacket on, get some food on. Whoa. So tonight I'm trying out for the first time the Fire Maple Mars all-in-one cook system. So it's got a wee mesh bag on the outside and uh, a bit of a cozy on the outside. It's quite tight and a really good fit. And of course, this is a, a heat exchange. So it's got a good clip on the top for holding the, the lid on and the handle. You just squeeze that in to release it. With the burner and a, a 100 gram gas canister, it doesn't quite fit on there, but it's good enough with the handle clipped over the top. There's a nice silicon grab on the top and uh, a few drain holes uh, at, on that side there, just the job. Gas, and this is the burner itself. So you can see inside, like under the grid, just a bit of metal uh, in there. And this is a uh, nickel ferrous material that glows hot when you're cooking. And you'll recognize this from some of my other videos as being the Pretty excellent fire maple pressure regulator. So they just fold out like that. That comes out like that. And you know I'm a big fan of remote canister stoves. So that will sit on the ground like that fairly stably. Right, I'll get this lit. Now there's a cup inside here as well. I think it's really worth putting that inside because if you just put the burner at the bottom it can scratch the anodized aluminium inside so definitely worth using that but you know what I think this will be really good for for winter cooking like this 
is to put your gas canister inside and that'll keep it off the ground. Now just putting a tiny bit of warm water or even a, a heat pad inside there will make a big difference to the performance of the gas in cold weather. So there's no piezo ignition on this. And there we go, you can see the gas just glowing on the, on the top there. And at first, the metal grate at the top will start to glow. And then the uh, alloy underneath will start to glow. And that gives off radiant heat, so it works by thermal radiation and infrared, which you can't see. Now incidentally, this glowing heat here, uh, where an object starts to glow or incandesce, it's called the Draper point, I believe, and that happens at 525 degrees centigrade. So needless to say, that's going to be giving off quite a lot of heat there. So there's a measure it inside so you can get your amount of water right. And what I'm going to do is put in half a litre of water there. That's glowing lovely now. You can see the metal like down there glowing. Right, stopwatch at the ready, and the, that just sits on top there, and off we go. We'll see how long that takes. Now I know it's not the same conditions as I've tested uh, many of my other stoves in. Last time it was at minus six, but I think what I might do is uh, just put a little bit of water around the gas canister at the bottom there, just to try and get it warm. Water for the dog while I'm at it. Coming on, definitely getting noisy. That's one minute 25. For these conditions, cold, I think that's good. That's it, bubbling like crazy. About 155 that was before I caught it. Stop my watch, stop watch on 157. So that's super fast. Woo. If uh, you recall the uh, Soto Stormbreaker on liquid fuel was around that when it was a little bit colder, but I'm delighted with that. I think that's uh, really quick. There's a water boiling unit. So, sorry about all the steam. So uh, look out for a full review on the Fire Maple at Mars. I'm just trying it out here for the first time, but I'm gonna do one of my lab kind of tests at home and the simmer test. And I might be comparing it to a similar model, the real deal from MSR. So watch my stove playlist for that coming up. Right, a cup of tea and then some food. Really cosy in here in the lavu. It's big for one person, but the lads are gonna join me later. And I'm gonna put the fire maple radiant uh, back on again. I've bought a whole separate winter gas just for that. And we'll have that burning for a little while. But I've taken safety precautions as well with a new portable gadget that I'll show you in a bit. Cheers. How are we doing? Okay, just come and have a look. How are you doing? All cosy here? Yep, so I've got me uh, Thermarest Polar Ranger sleeping bag. Wow, that looks amazing. So that's, uh, that'll keep us warm tonight. I've got me Rab Argon trousers on just for now, just to stay a little bit cosy. That's the um, Thermarest X Therm. And that's the uh, rectangular wide, is it? Yeah. Yeah, looks really cosy. Um, and a speedster, a border, a radar, cook it. Wow. Oh, looks a bit uh, bit lighter than my setup. <laughs> and. Uh, oh. Just come out of his. It's actually a rock that's just come out of his underpants. It's really hot. <laughs>
Good. Well, you're welcome to join me anytime in the big one, whenever you like. Right. Well, um, are we going to have a cooking? Uh, yeah, we can do. Yeah. yeah, I haven't had my tea. I've just had so a coffee I've, with I've some just whiskey. Had a, just had a coffee. Wherever Wherever I'll, uh, I'll get myself sorted. Wherever you and, like, uh, mate. I'll, I'll come across. Well, what we're going to do now? I've got some winter gas, and uh, we're going to see what kind of temperature we can get up in here. And uh, if you're concerned, don't worry. I've just invested in a portable carbon monoxide meter. So that's showing one part per million now, and I'll put the graph up on the uh, screen now. But basically what the crack is, is uh, the industrial standard is you're allowed to work for four hours in 35 parts per million. Uh, but if the uh, if it gets up to 35 parts a million, uh, we're going to be kind of like getting a bit cautious, really. So I'll put a link below in my gadgets uh, list. You can get these £39 on Amazon. But I've been doing uh, quite a lot of intent heating, so I thought this was uh, a bit of an investment. The TopTes CT300 carbon monoxide detector. We're all cosy. Right, we've got that going full belt now and there's a noticeable increase in the temperature here. So what's that uh, thermometer say just there? Pressure yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, 5.6. 5.6 degrees centigrade it's risen to. So if you look at the carbon monoxide monitor up there, it is at three parts per million. We've got it quite well ventilated. There's a vent up there, but two vents open at the bottom, and uh, so far it's not making any change. Uh, Andy, your lips do look a little bit on the blue side. Hard to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the good news is this footage is not going to be uploaded after our blue corpses are found in the morning because. Uh, Got the stove running here and the door shut and it's only three parts per million so as i said earlier 35 parts per million is uh, accepted for four hours for industrial purposes so uh yeah i think i'm going to be doing this more in intense testing the amount of carbon monoxide because there's a lot of concern and worry about stuff intense and i know you definitely should not take a fire like charcoal and stuff intra tent people do die but so far with this fire radiant stove we're getting lovely and warm and uh, we're not dying from an invisible odorless gas bonus so uh, we've used this what are these 250 gram canister 227 aren't they uh, how long have we had that going then would you say three hours yeah, i would say three hours and it's kept it uh, about five or six degrees warmer in here. It's done really well. And we'll see if uh, Andrew can fall over, put his hole in his down boot. Oh, no, very good. Top manoeuvres. Out there, it's cold. We've got a bit of spin drift coming over. Shut the door. Sorry, honey, disturbing your pee there. Not been a bad night. Something's under here somewhere. Oh, you funny. There's a nose. All wrapped up under there. Condensation, as you'd expect on a single skin shelter, quite a lot of it's frozen. Uh, so, time to pack up and get off the hill. Like all good nights, there's a little bit of tidying up to do afterwards. Like getting the party lights down. 
So this system of using in this large shelter, the Robins Mountain Vivi, has worked well. It's a tiny little bit of dampness inside, but you know, overall the breathability of it's been good. Base of foot must have been bad, it's got a little bit of dampness on, uh, but pretty good really, you know, from this reasonably condensation rich environment. Okay, that was certainly warm and dry. The only thing I'm kind of like not impressed with today really is the uh, Sea to Summit Etherlite Extreme, the black one. I've put uh, a thin mat over the top and that definitely made a difference and put it all inside my booby bag so I was kind of enveloped up uh, and that's been okay. Now, just to make things clear, there's no way I'm condoning using any sort of fire or heating device in an, ex in an enclosed space. But last night I just wanted to show that using the right safety equipment and in a well ventilated large space, you can actually heat a group shelter using a radiant stove. But with a lot of things that I do, don't do it. <laughs> Like for instance, only bring one tea bag, uh, but I've managed to find this on the floor, squished. So if it was good enough for wartime Britain, it's good enough for me. Right, brew on. Super impressed with this fire maple Mars. It's so fast. I mean, I barely turn round and that's boiled. Really good, really good. Wow, was that? Good, that sleeping bag, hasn't it? Great. All right. Just for a little while. The Nortent Lav 04 has proved itself again as an excellent structure. Uh, I had virtually no wind noise in the night, very, very little flapping. You just get a tiny, tiny bit of depression on the wind side, as you'd expect, and that's it. But it's uh, it's super solid. The only benefit is it's uh, you know a weight to carry down. But we've shared some of the kit between us, like the poles and pegs, and I've carried the canopy, and it's been fine. Leave no trace. Thanks for getting me bed. <laughs> How was your night then, lads? Not bad. Snug as a bug. Any flappage? A bit of flappage. Not that I'm uh, letting on. That'll be the wind. <laughs> so, yeah. Paul was in the Fell Raven at the Visco Light one. Yeah. Hilleberg. Hilleberg Atto. Yeah. So, keeping, swapping, changing? Keeping. Hilleberg Atto was my first ever tent. 11 Hillebergs later, gone back to the Atto. Okay. Mm -hmm. 